Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you guys are here. Woo, sorry for the delay. You know how that is. We, we have been, it's been a crazy day for me. I was just telling Josie, give it up for Josie Lewis. Woo, you are going to love this woman. If you want to see her TED Talk, please, please, please view it. It's TED Talk about flow and it will change your life. I was just watching it again yesterday. It was so good. But I was in the hospital last night about four or five o'clock in the morning because of severe pain on my side. Come to find out I had a kidney stone, which was like, what? No. <laughs> and it was so crazy because we were praying. You know me, I will always be praying. And my husband, Kevin, was there and we prayed. And uh, within like probably about 20 minutes, it had passed and um, there wasn't any pain. Thank you, Jesus. But that was like terrible. So I, I was telling Josie, I just basically woke up now. Because I have to showcase Josie to you. She's going to be on our creative conference coming up. You don't want to miss that. That creative conference will change your life. We did it last year and it was just so powerful through, uh, and, and we usually do it through Bethel. Now it's going to be through my Teresa Dedman ministry. So check it out on Teresa Dedman.com. We have over seven great speakers that are world renowned. Brian Peterson, Phil Atmore, Broadway. He's on Broadway and amazing. Uh, my husband, Kevin Tanasha Larray, a spoken word. And then we have these incredible, like 20 workshops to choose from which Josie is doing one, which you do not want to miss. It's crazy good. So check out the schedule. It's next week. It's Friday, Saturday, April 23rd, 24th. But it's it's one of those things where like we we can't keep going after, after revival without bringing in creativity to heal. And that's part of Josie's journey. And so Josie's from Minnesota where it's cold. Am I right? It's spring. It's spring here now, oh, but so spring has popped. The flowers are popping. Well, they're thinking about coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few yeah. little green sprouts here and there, but you know, yeah. it's slow. It's slow. It's slow, but, but there's, there's hope that there's no snow, right? That there is complete. Oh no, we had snow this morning. Oh, well, okay, <laughs> here you go. All right. I case in point what I'm living in California. Yeah. Versus Minnesota. <laughs> yep. Yep. So Josie, uh, a lot of my people that are on here, um, and again, we do want you to know, like, we love you to like post some questions, let us know what you're thinking so that Josie can really, uh, really talk about that. But what we really want to do right now is, is we want to talk about this journey of why, why did you get involved in Ted talks? Why why did your, your, your Instagrams go viral? And people need to know this story because it's such an incredible story of hope and healing. A lot of us out there are dealing with so much stuff because of this pandemic that you open up and you go to the store and what do you have to do? You, you want to travel. What do you have to do? There's so many different things in our world that were never there like last, well, before, you know, before last year. And so, um, but share your story and how this cathartic experience started you on this journey of how art can really flow and teach us. So go for it. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Teresa. I've been involved with Teresa's, um, the different conferences at Bethel and the one last year for now for, I think, since the beginning. And they always blow my mind. It's always worth it. And it's always amazing. So for, for those creatives out there, just sign up, just do it. Just, just do it. Just do it. It's, it's going it, it, to be amazing. And it's all online. So even if you are not able to be there April 23rd, 24th, it's all going to be given to you because it's all recorded. So there is no excuse. So you can't yes. say, well, I'm not going to be there. No, you can get all of the recordings. You can see Josie all you want. So really like check it out, go to TeresaDemon.com and let's get going. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be great. And another thing that I love about the way you have it set up is when I've attended it live in the past, you have to pick one of the, one of the, uh, the workshops, but this way you can go to one of the workshops live, but then you can attend all of them later because you can watch them and stream them. So that's, that's really awesome. It's, you know, value packed. 
but yeah. anyway, I will, I will talk a little bit about my, my background as an artist. So I am a full-time working artist and I'm a painter and I work with a lot of different kinds of mediums. And in the last few years, I would say I, you know, I kind of um, discovered the internet or the internet discovered me, however you want to look at it. <laughs> and, um, and I, people's were really responding to the kind of work that I was putting out into the world. And so um, it's been really exciting to me to, to be able to interact with a lot of different folks who are following my progression and my journey as an artist. And, and the story of how I got there is, you know, you can, you can watch the long version of this as my Ted talk, which isn't that long. It's like 20 minutes, but I'll give you the short version now, which is I had been an artist my whole life. Daddy's a painter, came up making art, went to art school as, you know, went to grad school and got my master of fine arts and painting. And I was, you know, it, it, I, I was serious. I was committed, but, you know, somehow in the, in those journey, in that journey of those years, I would never really felt like I had connected with my audience. I didn't really feel like I was fully, you know, finding my people. And it was kind of like wearying. Then, you know, the parallel track to that, I, I got married and had a little baby which, you know, is a bit of a change in life. I was 35 uh -huh. at the time. I was like an older mom, you know, to start off having kids. And um, so, uh, so then we decided to try for more kids. And then I kind of went into just, um, it, was, it was a very difficult season of many, many losses. Had multiple miscarriages and one full term still stillbirth, which mm. is, I mean, there's, there's nothing like that. That is one of the hardest things that I think a person can go through. So difficult. Yeah. And, um, so the, the, these two things were happening or these three things, I had a toddler, you know, no small feet and <laughs> I'm having miscarriages and these losses. And we're trying to decide, should we keep trying? Should we, how do we go yeah. forward. And then I was also, you know, a, a creative and making art, but not really feeling like I was connecting with an audience. And so there was a point where, um, after my last miscarriage, we, we had, we'd kind of determined I was 40 at that point. So it was like, maybe we should call it, you know, like <laughs> maybe it's just, we're just, I'm just done being pregnant. Let's just, you know, it was just too hard. So we, um, we agreed it was going to be our last pregnancy. And so when I lost that pregnancy, uh, you know, this is years now of just brutal losses. I also was like, and I've had it with art. I'm done. <laughs> I quit. Like this is dumb. It's, it's I don't over. Like it. It's <laughs> over. Um, and I knew, you know, I knew I was a creative person, you know, I knew it wasn't like, oh, I'm just, I just had it with making things, you know, like I knew I would always make things, but I thought, well, maybe I'll like write a book or maybe I'll like, you know, get, get out the old piano and, and try to do, be musical again. Or, you know, like, I, I just thought I'm just done trying to, you know, do this, do, do this thing. And, you know, it's always, it is funny. There is that, um, it does seem to be a true, a true truth that sometimes death does bring about life. <laughs> sometimes yeah. letting it all go will let new seeds sprout. Speaking of spring in Minnesota. Exactly. And, um, like, yeah. And, and that's a crazy thing because like a lot of us out there, some, sometimes what we do, we think that these losses are meant to be buried, but the process of what happened as you begin that journey, it, it's so vital that we listen to our heart, even though it's probably the most painful thing because you're already dealing with how your family is dealing with it, your husband, and then you, and then the whole structure has to die. Even the, the art had to die because it, it, you were seeing it from a different perspective. And, and so that, that's a huge thing for all of us out there. Like, don't let, um, don't let that seed go away, but listen to your heart in that journey and, and then share with us what happened. So what, how did you, how did you get over this and how did you find flow? So share that journey. Yeah. So I had, I had decided to not be a professional artist anymore. I was packing it up. Um, <laughs> and at, and at that point though, I, um, had some watercolor paints around and, you know, side note as, as a, as a serious artist, 
Um, I had kind of been taught in my grad school and, you know, the, the different professors that I had that watercolor wasn't like a legitimate medium, (laughs) (laughs) that somehow it was like too crafty or, I mean, possibly it was too feminine, you know, which is, let's stop and think about that for a second. That was a little annoying, (laughs) but, um, but I, I, so I, I felt like it was like a little bit, um, you know, um, like rebellious to like pull out the watercolors and like I'm gonna paint watercolors I don't care what my professors think and so I would make just these um shapes I was just doing patterns I was was almost like you know um, mandalas or like um coloring you know I I I I draw out some squares or some hexagons and then I just paint them with the with the watercolor and and then at the same time just for the fun of it because like I said I am a creative person I was like what would happen if I filmed it so I started filming these things just super you know nothing fancy technically I was using my phone or a cheap camera you know and then I time-lapsed it uh, these videos that I was making and I put them on Instagram to my 187 followers <laughs> and, uh, and thinking, you know, like I'd fully expected to get four likes, you know, and, yeah. um, and the first video that I put up went, went viral. It got 30,000 views or something, you know, so that wow, I was like, what? Come on. yeah, what is happening? What is going on? So I started posting a video every day. And now I've been doing that for four years. <laughs> so, wow. So that four is years crazy. later. <laughs> wow. And what have you found out? How has it really brought cathartic? Because it, it not only helped you to deal with your losses and to deal with what was buried deep within you, uh, but it also has helped others as well. So share the journey of why, why will people stare at just you painting hexagons? Like what, what is the value that you have found through this? Yeah. So I, you know, as you can imagine, I've thought about this quite a lot. (laughs) What is this all about? I don't understand what's happening. Um, and I, uh, I was listening to a science podcast yesterday actually. And the guy said, the mind can't heal the mind. Mm -hmm. And so, so his thing was, we try to think everything through, we try to rationalize everything. And, um, we try to like, figure out what we should have done or, you know, like should have thought. And he was like the body and the, like the limbic system, like these internal systems, like take over. He was referring to anxiety, but you could for sure talk about trauma, you know, yeah. like trauma does, it certainly affects our thinking mind, but it all, yeah. it affects all of us, you know, yeah. and There's big trauma where, you know, where I went through all those losses. And then there's also just the trauma of every day, the trauma of being lonely, the trauma of, you know, like not feeling like you're doing a great job or the trauma of, you know, having a fight with your friend. I mean, there's so many different things that, that affect us every day that we need to heal from, you know, like we need big healing and small healing. And so, yeah. Um, it's, it's a crazy journey because I'm going to just stop there because like, oh, I, I was just doing a, a program for a, a state run program on create to be free for kids for foster care last for the Easter break. Mm-hmm. And so I had these girls, then they were about third grade to seventh grade. And you could tell they were so like, there was so much anxiety in their faces, even with the mask on, you know, you can see it. You can see it like, I don't trust people, period, right? And and so, but I taught them about a feeling chart with related to colors. So like yellow was for happiness, blue was the sad dolphin, and they were related to a, an actual uh, literal thing that they could identify. Like, are you sad like the blue dolphin, for instance? And what I found, Josie, is like by, and then I introduced them to Disney characters because I, it was not a Christian program. So I brought in like Mufasa from the Lion King or like Cinderella and the, and the Prince Charming coming and speaking to her and, and also just things from Tangled. And so every day I would create these scenarios and my team would kind of act it out, but then they would draw about how they felt using the color. And then we would talk about that later. And what I found is what you're talking about, Josie, is like they could not share about that before, but through colors and through feelings, they actually were getting like, they were able to share their experiences and get it cathartically out. So it's so true. And, and, and if I would have said something like, so share about how you're feeling about being a foster kid that they would have gone, 
I mean, they would have given, they would have looked at me like, who are you? I don't trust you. What? And then at the end, they're all like talking about how excited they are for their future by their colors. by the, And so it's just this huge thing about what you're talking about is we try and solve things the wrong way. So yeah, it's crazy. And I love what you're talking about because that, this is the power that, that art and creativity have to heal the inside of us. Yes. It's so yeah. vital. Yeah. And you know, it's really interesting how, um, I was thinking about perfectionism, which definitely rears its head a lot in the artistic process. You know, Mm -hmm. people feel called to be creative. They want to paint or to write or to sing or, you know, all these different, you know, different expressions, sometimes all of those things. (laughs) There's no reason to stop. You might as well do them all. Um, But then there is this identity issue where if you, if your work doesn't turn out to be exactly the way you envisioned it, then you start to get like freaked out and it happens in your body. It's anxiety, you know, because you're like, oh, this isn't working the way I want. And you get really frustrated and then perfectionism like gets you really going. And so, um, so one of the things that I learned that I think happened when I went through the trauma and then I started to paint the hexagons is that I was taking out. Um, for me, what was making my art practice less fun was because I was thinking about what other people would think about it, you know, like, cause I'd been oh, in good. grad school and I'd, you know, done all the, and I was trying to be like critically, you know, important or something, you know, yes, like at the, at, yeah. yes, like be significant. And I was, you know, like, what would a critic say about this? And it was, you know, at this different level because I'd been through all this, the schooling, but it was like, um, I was way overthinking it and I was not getting into flow or into any kind of like rhythmic kind of pleasant or (laughs) enjoyable state when I was working and it made my work bad and it made me stressed out. So it was like, it wasn't working, you know, like it was not working, (laughs) but when, but when everything got burned down, (laughs) your your house got burned down. Yes. Yeah. When everything got burned down and I just started to paint the hexagons and it wasn't for anybody, you know, like at first it wasn't for anybody. It was just for me. Like I'm just experimenting here and it felt like a out of body experience a little bit where I'd start to paint these hexagons and I would just drop into something, which I later found out was a flow state. It's like a thing in science. Um, You drop into something and it's, and there's actually biochemical changes that are happening in your brain and things that are happening um, in areas that are activated doing different tasks in our brain, like shift around when we're in flow. And in particular, the prefrontal cortex, which is the, the, the frontal brain. And it's, it's really important. We need the prefrontal cortex is about high level planning and thinking and reasoning. And, you know, like the, the, the daily tasks, you know, it's how we write our list of the stuff that we need to get done. Um, but most of us live up there in the free frontal, frontal cortex, and it is not, um, it's only a tiny part of who we are of, yes. and, and we dwell in there and then we try to solve all our problems in there. And then, and then there's a, there's a really thick nerve strand that goes from our prefrontal cortex to our amygdala, which is in the back. And the amygdala is all about fight or flight. So that means any anxiety we experience in the prefrontal cortex, like say you're making something and you get frustrated because it doesn't look good. It triggers your amygdala which is fight or flight, which triggers your body, which makes you anxious and not able to like function as a whole person. (laughs) So you need to, yes. I was going to say something. And by the way, the questions, if you have any questions for, for Josie, because this is, you guys are learning a lot right now. Isn't it cool? So um, please pepper that. We want to know questions uh, for her too. We're going to do that later on, but I just have this thing I want to say to people, like, because this is so important that they get that. If you are not enjoying what you love to create, it's because this thing is ruling in your life and you haven't gotten into flow because of God, I mean, you look at a little child and when they're doing art, do they look stressed out? If they're building, do they look, no, they're, they're practicing flow. They're practicing and they, and you know, they lose sight of time. Uh, Johnny, come on back. Oh, no, what? Oh, I didn't know that I was playing so long. It's like, but that's what happens in flow. So I just want you guys to know, like there is answers 
And it's for you to rethink why you create, which is what Josie's talking about. So yeah, go ahead. Josie. Yeah. And, and the, and the, the mechanism to get you into flow. So what actually happens is your prefrontal cortex, which is in charge of all this high level thinking and reasoning, which we need, it's important. But when you're in flow, the prefrontal cortex, like on the brain scans just goes dark. Like it just goes completely quiet. So one of the things for me that lives up there is my, um, my critical mind, you know, like yeah. my, I like to call it the strict librarian. So she's up there <laughs> like, mm, I don't know if that's right. I think you should probably, you need to move that. And there's other, you should probably be doing the dishes. Like she's got all sorts of things that she wants to tell me all the time. <laughs> when I get into flow, the prefrontal cortex just winks out. And so then that's why it feels like an out of body experience because it's an out of mind experience, you know, like, so you lose track of time, you lose track of like your physical, you know, needing to eat or go to the bathroom or something. It just goes away. I'm, I'm sure everybody who's listening to me has had this experience where you just like fell into your thing. It's gardening, it's cooking, it's singing. It's a great conversation with a good friend. Like though, all those things can get us into that like almost like a, a selfless state where we're yeah. just in the moment, fully in the moment. Yeah. And, um, and there's a lot of, of course, a lot I could say about it, but I, the one thing I want to say about the mechanism to get there is that um, you have to have the right level of difficulty. So if you have too much difficulty, uh, you're frustrated because you can't do it, you know? So then that would be like putting, I'm not a skier. If you put me on the top of a mountain and we're like, okay, you should ski. I'd be like, I'm going to die. You know, like I would not be able to get into flow, but plenty of people can get into flow skiing. Not me because I don't know how to do it. You know? So if you don't, if it's too hard, you can't get into flow. If it's too easy, then it's like, I, you know, that's like watching TV or something. I'm just sitting there. I'm not, you know, like there's no, there's no investment of my effort to try to, to try to accomplish something, you know? So I ask people a lot, you know, what is the percentage that you think you need to get, you know, if 0% is like no challenge and 100% is, you know, the the very peak of challenge, um, you know, people will say, well, it's probably like 50% or 80% challenge, you know, like it's going to be a little hard. Right. And uh, it turns out it's four. <laughs> it's so funny. 4%, everybody 4%. Is crazy. I yep. was listening to you and, and it's like that shock and awe, like, Oh, it, it's like that strict librarian is still, is still leading us. We, we have to get, wait, we have to get, we have to make it super still hard. And, there's that thing that it, it should be fun. So if you're not having fun and you're challenged a little, then like you can't get into that, the flow state, which is so, so vital for people to know. Yeah. So it's like, take some of the pressure off friends, just take the pressure off, have some fun, paint some hexagons, you know, like it doesn't have to be so advanced and you don't need to like paint, you know, your, your grandfather in a perfect portrait, you know, like the first oh, time you start painting, you know, you can, you can start easy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now your, your Ted talk too. And those, again, I just talked about this, like, please watch Joey, Josie Lewis and her Ted talk on flow. But that was a defining moment for you too, because you found your voice as well, because art is one way that you have like found this niche of letting flow happen for others because what happens and Josie, I know that you know this, but everybody needs to know like when you watch a person in flow, you can get into flow yourself. So these Instagrammers that are watching Josie are experiencing what she's experiencing. So what I'm talking about, and you guys know that I, I talk about this a lot, but supernatural creativity is like, if I'm in the zone and other people see what I create, it gets them into that same encounter. And so that's kind of what she's talking about. So think about like the impact of your music, your dance, your whatever it is, it will impact others if you're in flow. Now, if you're nervous, it's going to make other people nervous. You guys ever seen that? Like it, when, when somebody's singing and they're so nervous, you're going, oh my God, I just feel for you. You're going to do it. You're going to do it, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. But then when they're really in the moment and they're in flow, you go, oh my gosh, that's the most beautiful thing because they're, they're present. And so that strict librarian gets people out of being present and into performance, which is not good. But that Ted talk, tell me, 
tell me why that was such a defining moment, because I know you love to share and speak about this as well. So um, share about that process. Well, one of the things that has happened to me in the, you know, the intervening years since I started to develop like a social media audience is that I've discovered, like you were saying, Teresa, that, you know, people, um, I was mystified as to why people loved my videos. Um, so I was really paying attention to, you know, their DMs and their comments and what they would say was, it, it was relaxing. It would give them a break. And then, uh, it would, you know, they felt like some people would say, I watch your videos and I just cry. <laughs> like, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's like, it was, it was like giving, I mean, and I, it's hexagons. It's like, it's not complicated, you know, like I, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't talk to the frontal brain, you know, like it's somehow connected to something else that's deeper than that. I don't, I don't really understand the, how that happens, but boy, let me tell you, I sure hope it's the spirit. (laughs) Like I sure hope that what I somehow like these videos that I make give people like a beam of the Holy spirit, you know, like, cause, and hopefully I'm a channel for that. Like that would be the best case scenario, you know, that, that, that that's the expression that I'm doing. And I, and I have like more or less a secular platform. Like I don't talk about faith. I don't talk about religion. It's like, that's not, that's a, decision I made. And it's, uh, I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> like, exactly. I think that I, I can be like an entry point for people who, to connect, exactly. you know, I, I think in fact, uh, I'm just doing an e-course called create without walls to go along with my creative conference, create without walls. But, but that's what I, I talk about the sacred secular and how people don't understand that our Christian base, that we're called to be the light, but not necessarily have a cross in our painting. And, and that's like, that's new revelation for many different people because they think from a religious mindset that somehow creativity has to have that. And I think, well, you know, when God created every sunset, he doesn't have to put a cross to say that he is the creator, <laughs> but it leads people to, to know him because you want to know how, wow, this, this person who created this, who are they? It leads that. And so your art is leading them on a journey, whether or not you, you say uh, Jesus, which is so vital that, that we understand as creatives that we're called into being the light without trying to compromise, without trying to uh, be different. Like Josie, you are who you are and it shows through what you create and it blesses people. Now, they might not believe in Jesus. They might be Buddhists. They might be Hindus. They might be atheists. But the power of of Jesus through you is flowing into their um, what they're watching on Instagram. And it's it's leading them to God, which is what people don't get. And so, yeah, I just have to, you know, people really like in that are watching right now. It's like the beauty of Jesus sharing these principles in parables is so vital to watch. And how he he did it in a very non-religious way to open up people's hearts. And that's what happens with your art, which is so vital. Um, I love watching your TED Talk because to me, what you did is you, you, you have such a way of using humor and you have such a way of making it, making it accessible for everyone. Uh, when you watch it, you'll be thinking, oh, I, I have to paint something or I, I have to get into that flow because there's something that you'll find about yourself in that state that you won't get by trying to be perfect for someone else. So I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, a, a question I have for you, now that your flow has gone viral in social media, can you share some testimonies about people that have contacted you or messaged you? about how it's impacted them because I'm so curious on that. What, what has been the, the results of them watching you for a long period of time? Yeah. So I, you know, there's some people I'm sure that watch me just for pure entertainment value and art painters or don't plan to be. Um, but there's a, another pocket of my audience that, um, I think that my videos and what I bring to social media represents like an invitation, like, Oh, I could do that. Painting doesn't have to be hard. I could I've always wanted to paint and Josie's making it look easy and fun. It should be easy and fun, you know, like, and I think that it's, um, 
you know, it's, it's not necessarily obvious to people where they think they have to be so good. Or, you know, a lot of people have art scars where, you know, their, their parents or somebody in authority told them, oh, it's not worth spending time as an artist because you can't make money or it's just yeah. a waste of time or it's not practical or your art isn't good. Or, you know, I don't, I've talked to so many people who took an art class in sixth grade and the teacher <laughs> said that they're, art was, you know, you should have put the palm tree over there. And then it just crushed their sweet 13 year old soul. And then that was it. They were like, I'm never doing it again. But then it's just been with them all these years. And, uh, and so then I think, I hope that what I can do and do for my audience is like, give them that invitation, like, oh yeah. And that teacher can, you know, go, go somewhere. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, Josie, we were just sharing about like, I have my new art, my new art and poetry book called Created to Overcome. And Josie, that's exactly what happened to me. I was like 17 or 18. I was in um, a, a creative writing class. And all of a sudden, this uh, th this teacher um, put me down in, a, in such an incredible way that I never did poetry until like I until three or four years ago. Now that's wrong, guys. If you don't let those scars stop you from doing what you love, yeah, it's just yeah. powerful. It's just so important. But what? Now tell me, just a little sneaky thing. What? What will you be sharing at the uh, at the creative conference next week? Uh, give us a sneak peek. And again, everybody, if you have any questions for Josie, she would love to answer those. So go ahead and uh, and share with us what what is it that you feel is is the now word. Okay. So I, especially after, after COVID and uh, all of us interacting with the world so much on our screens and, you know, via our phones and on social media and all those things, I would love, and I'm going to be talking about the intersection of how we bring our whole selves and our art that is, doesn't have to be perfect. And it doesn't have to be like fully you know, amazing and gorgeous. Like we can, we can bring works and ourselves in the process of development to social media. And I think that that is really important because it, it's there that we can create um, a community and people that we can connect with people we could be friends with. And, uh, and then ultimately, you know, if this is where the direction that you want to go, if you want to become uh, like an artist that sells their work, it's a way to like bring your work to the world that people yeah. might, you know, want to buy it. So yeah. I think that there's a progression there, but I think there's a real value in just getting yourself out there and bringing your heart, even if, even in, in a perfect state to, um, to, to the, the public world. I so I want that. to talk about that. Oh, I'm going to have to watch that one. That is so powerful. Uh, Josie, part, part of what I, feel, I believe like stops creatives is they think that social media is a scary thing. Like, oh, I could never do that. It seems overwhelming to them. But once they start to see the impact of what you can have with people around the world uh, and, and how you can really help them to grow, then it becomes a vehicle. And I think where you're going to be taught, you're going to be helping people to get into this vehicle and go, Oh, I can drive this car. And once they see that they're going to get so astounded by the number of people that want what they have, but they have no vehicle to get that to them. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And so thrilled. I have one, I have another question for you. Uh, what can creatives do on a regular basis? Um, to become emotionally healthy and integrated as a person? Like what, what are some top tips that you do to help with that process? Um, yeah, I, I love that question. You had put it on the notes for our talk today. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, this is a good one. Um, my number one answer, which I, I can only thank my mom, Kathy Lewis for this, uh, is to <laughs> drink more water. <laughs> oh my gosh you know that's what they said to me because i was in the hospital oh. okay what, what's your prescription drink more water i felt like oh yeah i don't want this pain back i i need and so this can be yeah. emotionally too like come on i love well, it we're, we are whole people and so we have we have these bodies and our bodies are 
communicate. There we go. She's got her water. <laughs> our bodies are working uh, with our minds and working with our spirits and working with our souls. Everything is all together. And sometimes like shifting our moods and being able to take action just is starts at the 4%, you know, like the 4% of like, I have my bottle too, because I keep it with me everywhere I go. Because anytime I'm like, hmm, I don't feel good how much water have I had today? I mean, so this is like a super, it's a super practical thing that, and it's like, it's also like get good sleep. Don't be doom scroll, scrolling at 10 PM. Like turn off the news, turn off the screens. Don't, you know, like give yourself a little break, like get good rest, go for a walk, move your body. You know, like these things are things we forget. It's so easy with, especially, you know, parents with young kids and, and we've got jobs and we've got commitments and houses we got to take care of and so many things, but it's like, we got to take care of the temple, you know, like we got to take care of it in really practical, simple ways. So that's, you know, that's just like, that's a freebie. That's like mom advice. (laughs) There's my mom advice. Have you been drinking? Have you been drinking enough water? (laughs) Oh my well, gosh. I, I found out that I wasn't Josie. So I am following yeah. that doctor's <laughs> orders from you. And I am doing that. I, I love that. Uh, you know, it part, part of the process is that sometimes we've been taught a wrong belief system from, from a real Gnostic, which I would, a, a hyper-religious mindset that says you have to sacrifice everything for Jesus. But you know, Jesus took care of himself. He, and he took care of the, the crowds. Okay. They're hungry. Okay. Well then let's feed them. Well, what do we got? Okay. Well then let's be thankful for what we have. And, and so he took care of bodily needs. He took care of the disciples. He took care of even on Sabbath, like, Oh, you need to get healed. It doesn't matter. Your body is important. And I love what you're talking about. Taking care of yourself is what the scripture says when love your neighbor as yourself. And I don't know why we've missed that. (laughs) Yeah. And then, and then as far as the, as far as the art part, it's like, then I've got two, two words for that. Just start. (laughs) (laughs) Just start. Like, and if you only have 10 minutes, then spend 10 minutes, you know, like open up your keyboard or I have this little this is this little doodle notebook, which sitting, this is just what's sitting in front of me right now, because some, some days I'm just too busy and I don't have time to make art, even though I'm a full-time artist, it's a real shocker, but it's true. So (laughs) sometimes I have to like carve out the time. Like I'm going to take 15 minutes and I'm going to make a little tiny watercolor painting. It doesn't have to mean anything. It doesn't have to do anything. It's like my journal. And it's like, I have to create that everyday practice, you know, and it might might not be every day for every person. Maybe it's every other day, maybe it's weekends, but it is something that you just have to do, you know, just do and keep it real easy, real simple, no, no pressure. And it'll pay huge dividends. It will. And and that's kind of what you're talking about is what I did with the poetry too, is I just started to do 40 day challenges. And I think Mm -hmm. I did about four or five of those. And that's what led me to have content than to write my art and poetry book created to overcome. And that was part of the process. And, and so what you're talking about is like everything that you create can be repurposed. Everything that we create every day isn't about doing a masterpiece. Okay. I have to have five hours to create. It's like, no, those 15 minutes are enough. I love that. Did you guys hear that? Just start. I do have a question from Marzan Slabert for you. And Josie, how do you combine your creative purpose which obviously flows from God with business or selling or earning an income from it. Can we talk about this a little, your views? (laughs) Do you have four or five more hours? (laughs) 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 Teresa, you're good, right? We can just keep going. Oh yeah, you don't have all day. That's right. right. I mean, that's right. Come on. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, the intersection of business and a creative life is is something that's like a huge passion for me. And I'm actually in the process of developing a course to help artists do this because it's hard. You know, it's like a, a lot of artists aren't really, my dad is a great example. He's an amazing painter, just so fabulous. His art is so good and he's so diligent and he's been making art his whole life. Um, but he's never been great at figuring out how to market it and how to, you know, how to price it and how to package it and all those things that, you know, it sounds, um, you know, people even hate the word marketing, you know, they're like, marketing, yeah. ah, sales, ah. 
And it's like, which just as a way to, inter- to interact with the world. And, you know, exactly. like, and so I think that um, I, I have a huge passion that is slowly, I, I'm slowly bringing that to my like public face of like helping people just with this, like, how do you, how do you document your expenses for your taxes, for instance, yeah. it's really boring in some ways, but I'm like so excited about talking about it. So that, that will be coming that will become and, and you will be kind of shadowing that at the creative conference so yeah if you want more marlene on that i would come to the creative conference um in fact just start do that right now TeresaDevin.com. we also have another comment anders hegstrom says this is so good i i can now set myself up for success thanks so much for sharing i i feel like and again this is such a great talk because part of the process that that a lot of us have is like God wired us to love to create and he wired us to get into flow. Um, I, I, I mean, in gardening, in cooking, in art, in creative stuff. And somehow the enemy has stolen that from us. And not only, not only is it for us for rejuvenation and for finding that flow of who we are, but it also is so cathartic. It, I, and and I, I can't tell you, like I tell people, and this is just something that happens to me when, when I'm painting on stage or when I'm painting somewhere for something, I get into the flow and I don't want to come out. It's so weird. It's like, no, worship is not (laughs) over yet. Please keep playing. I mean, I'm in this place where you, it's like, it's, it's like the perfect place that is that God meets you in and that you find your identity in. And I'm telling you what you said is gold, like that perfectionism, those lies about trying to re re like think what I, what you're creating this and whatever it destroys your encounter time with with really the love of how God wired us to be it's just a crazy thing you're really onto something Josie I I think that what you carry is so vital for people because everybody has been robbed of yep. feeling like they can do this and that they can enjoy the process. I want you to, to pray and impart if you have any last words and just to pray for us out there, because this is a journey of, of hope and love. I mean, you think of heaven is, is there going to be like that librarian up there? No, <laughs> they're not, they're, they're not going to be there and we need to bring heaven to earth. So I, I really want people to get this. So go for it. Yes. Okay. So I was, I was praying about this earlier. And I was seeing uh, all, all of these dear souls that will be watching this or even just kind of in your orbit, Teresa, you know, you're the people that have been brought to you for your, the, the wonderful care that you, that you bring to them. And, um, and I was seeing these souls like lights and they were getting brighter. So it's like uh, the path of the righteous grows brighter till the break of day, you know? So it's like, there's a, there's a number of really great verses about getting brighter, especially like you don't put your, your lamp under a basket, you know, you stick it at the highest possible place to glow the brightest and the best. And the most wonderful thing about flow is that a, it's incredibly fun (laughs) and then B healing happens deep in our souls and C we get better. So we get our, our practice and our voice and our language and what we're bringing to the world becomes more and more refined because that's just the way it's set up. And so then we're able to bring a clearer and more beautiful message that will bring hope to other people. So that, so that, that is my prayer for these, these wonderful bright lights that are getting brighter. So I pray for brighter and brighter lights and better and better art and better expressions of who they're meant to be in the world that they can um, bring hope and life and love to the people that they're called to serve and to, to care for and to be in relationship with in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And, and I, I love this and people guys out there, if, if you, if you got impacted by Josie, share this talk with other people, because there's something about this perfectionism thing that needs to be broken. And sometimes it's like, uh, Josie's like, like a pioneer in this. It's listening to it and going, oh, dang. Yeah. I always feel like there's a strict librarian in my head when I try to write, when I try to dance, when I try to do whatever it is that you love. And, and then think about those times when you felt like, oh man, I could just do this forever. Those were the times when that strict librarian, you weren't, 
operating from the frontal cortex. You were in flow and that was shut off. That's how God wants us to be. And so that bright light is so vital for people to get. It's amazing. Um, and guys, if you like Josie, there's more next week, Friday, Saturday, the creative conference, Create Without Walls. You can go to my website, TeresaDebbin.com, sign up now, and you will be so blessed. And Josie, thank you. I'm so sad that you have snow on the ground in Minnesota, but it will melt. <laughs> And spring is on its way. You're such a joy. And I will see you next week, Josie. And everyone, I will see you at the Creative Conference. And remember, you are born to create. See you guys soon. Bye.